Hi, in this series of video, you will learn how to consume a Salesforce API in SAP. Here the business requirement is, you want to pass the sales invoice data, that is known as a demand data from SAP to Salesforce. For this scenario, the API will be developed by the Salesforce team and that API we have to consume in SAP. In case if you are working on OETA service or REST API, so what we do, all the development we do in the SAP system, then we share the details to the third party system that can, like it's say a Salesforce, C4C or any other third party software. So we share all the details of OELTA and REST API with third party. So here, this is the reverse scenario. The API will be developed by third party system here, Salesforce, and that we have to consume in SAP. From SAP, we use a post call. And once they receive the data in Salesforce, so they will display the data in their web page. Okay, here I don't have access to Salesforce, so I will explain all the SAP part, how to consume the API, authorization API, and the post API, and how to perform the post operation. So for this, let's understand the API document. So whenever the Salesforce team will develop the API, they will share the document. Based on the document, you have to do all the required coding. That all we'll see in this. So here is the API document shared by the Salesforce team. The requirement is demand upset API. And as this is the post call and this is the authentication based API, this means that before the post API, we have to call one more API for the authorization. And here it is O or 2.0 authorization concept. So for this authorization API, they share this endpoint. This is the endpoint URL. Okay. And they have also mentioned here the request that is post form data and the grant type, client ID, client secret, username and password. All these details you have to pass while accessing to this token API. Okay, this is called as the endpoint URL. And this endpoint URL is different in each client. Like in SAP, we have development system, quality system, and production system. In the same way, they have sandbox, it's called as development and a production system. So the URL will be different in each client. Now first we have to call this authorization API by passing the grant type like password, client ID will be some number, a combination of a small and capital letter and numbers, client secret, username and password. All these are dummy just for demo purpose. Then they will also share the sample request, how to we have to pass the details and the response. So once we call this endpoint URL, by passing all those details, we'll get a response like this in SAP. Like access token, this is the main token ID, which we have to pass to the next API, along with other fields like token type, issue add, and signature. So once we receive this token number, then we have to call the actual demand creation API. Okay, for demand creation, the endpoint will be different. And for demand API, here in the header, we have to pass the token number from the previous request. Okay, so this is the endpoint of demand later. Okay, first one was for the authorization and second to actual post the demand data. And along with this, they will also share the sample body, like while accessing the demand data, what details we have to pass. So they will share some sample format. All left hand side are the field numbers and right hand side we can see some dummy values. And here also we'll get a response. 
whether it's success or fail. Okay. Now technical approach in SAP. So in SAP, what we'll do? First, we'll create a table and table maintenance to restore the endpoint and the login credential. As I mentioned, the endpoint will be different in each client development, quality production. So it is better to create a table maintenance like this with the process URL is for endpoint, grant type, client ID, client secret, username and password. Here process means token or demand or let's say you also want to pass the receipt data then one process will be received. Okay, so in each client we can maintain the URL in the table maintenance so that we don't have to hard code that URL in the app program. For that, it is better to create a table maintenance and mention all the details in that table. Like this, the process is demand and token, the respective endpoint, then the client type, client ID, client secret, username and password. All the grant type, client ID, etc. will come only for token API. For the other process like demand, receipt, sales order, will require only endpoint. Okay, and in each client, we have to maintain those endpoint details. Okay, and after table, what we have to do? After creating a table and table maintenance, we have to create a function model. Function group and function model first to fetch the token that is the authorization API. And once this is worked successfully, if you are able to create a token from self first, then after that we'll create the second API to post the demand data. Okay, so three steps you have to perform in SAP side to consume this API. And here I'm creating only function model. After that, you can use the post method function model in your custom program from where you can pass the data. But first you have to create the function model as an independent model. So can we can do a testing and same we can use at the multiple place. So I will show you how the table maintenance is created in SAP system. So here is my table. The process is demand and token, endpoint URL grant type, client ID, client secret, user ID, and the password. And here I maintain all this detail only for token. For actual APIs, only endpoint URL is sufficient and all this will call in the function model. Okay, so we're done with the theoretical session of how to consume the Salesforce API or we can call as the any third party API with the authorization concept. My next session will create the function group and function model. Thank you.